morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you again for the time that we can have together. Lord, this morning, open our ears so we can hear, open our minds that we may understand, and our hearts that we may receive what you have for us. Lord, bless us and keep us, and we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning is a special class. It's going to be on baptism. I'm titling it, What Can Stand in the Way of Me Being Baptized? Mm. I took this scripture from Acts, and this is the story of the eunuch. Mm -hmm. So let's read from Acts chapter 8, 28 through 39. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up and read along with me. And on his way home was sitting in his chair. Oh, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chair, chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Now the interesting part, if you have your NIV Bibles, if you look at the bottom, it has a footnote, because I just read in, uh, from 836 to 838, 37 is not in some of the Bibles. And what it says in some manuscripts here, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Why did the eunuch believe? Through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it, through the Holy Spirit worked on him, but he heard the testimony of Philip. Now I can imagine Philip, I mean, he must have started, I mean, imagine the story she's telling. Um, he, he, knew, he knew it all. So he's laying out and what happened, and that Jesus is the Son of God, that, that he believed. He believed everything he said. Now, Philip, of course, he got on and took a ride with him. And for him, I, I, I'd ride as long as I could. So I would imagine it was a long story. He told him quite a bit. And so he must have talked about baptism. And when he got to that point, what did he do? He says, there's some water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? And he was baptized. My question is, do you believe? <coughs> Vinny, do you believe? Yes, I do. Not to embarrass, but can you tell me why you believe? I mean, I honestly, uh, I think it's pretty blatantly obvious. I, I just look around and I see everything. Okay. And when I read the Bible, I feel everything. That happened. I sense it. <laughs> Did he die for your sins? Yes. And for that, let's take a look. John 3.16. In John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God, God's one and only Son. 
born again. We use that term, born again. Um, we use it quite often. Um, we talk, there, there was a, a, a part in the scripture where it talks about um, Nicodemus. I mean, look, look, what are you talking about born again? Am I supposed to enter my mother's womb and be born again? What does this mean? What are you talking about? Well, he's talking about being baptized or accepting Christ as your personal Savior and then baptism. Well, what, what is baptism? It's immersion in water. Immersion. I'm glad you used that word. I use the word baptism here, but the word is actually immersed. In my particular scripture or book, it does use the word immersed. Um, the word baptism was a word, if you're in Harry Bellacoop's class, that was quote unquote invented. It was a new word. Um, it was sometime around the <coughs> reign of Elatorius, because he was the current bishop of Rome. And they were baptizing infants. Who here was baptized as an infant? Another way of looking at, at, at being baptized as an infant, we call it christening. Mm -hmm. As an infant, do you recognize your need for salvation? Do you know? No. That's why in this church or in other churches, we also use the term dedication. We will dedicate a child to God mm -hmm. so that sometime later, when he's able to make that decision, for himself, not only can he accept him as his personal savior, but he can be baptized in understanding what he is doing when he's being baptized. Now, there's a number of churches, again, that do the infant baptism, even the Methodist church where we were at, uh, Episcopalian. I can remember, I actually remember being baptized when I was younger. They didn't do it as a baby, but when I was a little boy, I had no idea what I was doing. I remember coming up, putting some water on my head. Okay, you know, fine, that's great. What is it? I had no idea. Now, what's interesting is baptism. When John the Baptist was baptizing he was using an Old Testament principle. This was not something new. It was a ritual for purification. And in that pure purification, they would have, a, a, I'm going to use the term baptismal, but a place to immerse them, and they would call that a mikvah. Basically, the simple de definition of a mikvah means a place where there is living water. That's why when John the Baptist was doing it in the water, or in the river, the river was flowing, they called that living water. Not just sprinkling, but total immersion is required in a baptism. Some of the rituals that they would go through, they would totally immerse themselves. And again, as I said, this was not something new. So they understood what we call baptism, but they understood it as immersion, a purification. So they were identifying that they were being purified in us in our baptism, what are, we under, what are we identifying as? That we have been purified. We are cleansed. We, we're we're going to live a new life. We will identify with Jesus Christ. We will live the life that he did in obeying him and following him. That's the importance of baptism. We're making an outward identification with the life of Jesus Christ that our life is completely, totally changed. And it's good. We have our friends. We have our families come. It's a time to rejoice. It's a time of blessing. Again, it symbolizes putting off of the old man and putting on the new man. Again, born again. In Romans 6, 3 through 4, it says, Or do you not know that all of us who were immersed into Christ Jesus, were immersed into his death. Therefore, we were buried together with him through immersion into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. 
Again, there's that symbol, there's that word, immersion. We're talking about being immersed. It's a newness of life. Uh, and once we put off this old man, do we put him back on again? No. What happens to the old man? Yeah, He's so dead, well. right? Yeah. Reminds me, uh, I, got, I got plenty of time, there was a story that uh, a pastor had told years ago, and he did a sermon, it was called on, on necromancy. So he, that's, what, that's what he called it. But there was a practice back then for punishment that the Romans would take a dead body and strap it to the person and the contamination from that body would cause that person to rot. We do not want to put the old man back on. No way, no how, not ever. And that should stand as a good picture as why we don't want to live the same old lifestyle that we did. Baptism separates us from that. We are purified, Amen. we are washed clean. Amen. We are washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Yes. And it's an outward symbol by being baptized or immersed in the water as part of our ritual of purification. Any questions so far? No questions. <laughs> questions on, on baptism. Um, a lot of you said you were infant baptized, and I'm going to guess most all of you were baptized being immersed in water. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any stories of baptism? Anything? I, I just, I know I was baptized as a baby because my mother told me we were. Yes. Uh, because my dad was Catholic, and that was a belief in the Catholic religion. So, mm -hmm. um, But then... Larry and I were baptized in the 70s at our little church in Young Hickory. We had, actually in the creek, mm -hmm. they had a, it was a swimming hole like, mm -hmm. and um, that's where our pastor used that water for baptism. So that's when, mm -hmm. you know, we were baptized. What made you decide to get baptized in reverse? Um, well, I had never been baptized, uh, is that I remembered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had been saved when I was 12, but I had never been baptized. And our pastor preached on baptism, and, and that's, that's why we were baptized. There is a scripture that talks, it says, if you are saved and baptized, then you'll go to heaven. Do we need to be baptized to go to heaven no. to be saved? Mm -hmm. No. I think there's a number of scriptures that refer to the fact, for example, uh, I have a scripture somewhere, maybe I didn't print them out, let me go to page two. Here we go. <laughs> well, actually I'm going to go back a little more and talk about the, the eunuch too. Um, the eunuch actually was responsible for taking the gospel back to Ethiopia. Eunuch doesn't necessarily mean he was emasculated. A eunuch meant that he was in the service of the queen. They considered him neither male nor female, but someone who was of service. And that was his. He, he was in service of the court of the queen. So when he went back to Ethiopia, the gospel spread. I'm going to go to, again, to, to uh, there it is. Do you need to be baptized? Whoever believes, and this is the scripture, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Let's take a look at the thief on the cross. Did he have a, time, a chance to be baptized? No. But what did Jesus promise him? Let's see. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, 
Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, there are other instances in the Bible, for Acts 10, 44 through 48, 48 where in that story, um, they heard the message first. They actually received the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, speaking in tongues, and then they were baptized. They were baptized after the fact. Now suppose you come to Jesus Christ, you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you know nothing about baptized. According to some people, if you weren't baptized, where are you going? Again, baptism is not a requirement of your salvation. It's an outward expression, again, of your devotion to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Excuse me a minute, because that's what I did before I mixed up some of my papers. That's why I got behind. <laughs> okay. Well, apparently I printed something wrong. So, let's look. What can you expect at baptism? Number one, you're going to be immersed. Number two, what happens after your baptism? When you come up out of the water? You're born again in Christ. You're born again in Christ. And that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the baptism of Jesus. What happened to him? Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit came mm -hmm. as a dove mm -hmm. and appeared. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of his ministry. Mm -hmm. um, when I was baptized, I experienced elation. I was baptized in a Baptist church, so I didn't know all the other stuff other than it was a requirement just to be dunked in the water. And it's an outward testimony of your belief in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But it can be more. Um, as we've seen in other places, some people will start speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Some have prophesied. Be open to what the Lord will do in your life. Be prepared to experience something that you've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Now, John the Baptist, remember, he was baptizing a lot of people. And what was he baptizing them for? I'm going to, it's going to be repetitious, but he was re baptizing them for the repentance Thanks. of their sins. Mm -hmm. And this was all coming before before Christ came. Now, he still baptized after Christ came, but he's, he, he lost his following. They ended up going and following who? Jesus. Jesus. They went and they followed him. They followed him on a regular basis. Um... It's not easy following Jesus. If we look, we look at what we call the apostles now, they argue. They fought among themselves. There's not much that they didn't do. They wanted to be number one. Remember the argument? I want to be on the left hand and I want to be on the right hand. His mother came and said, put me there. Put me there. I want to be there. That's up to our, our Father in Heaven to decide. But our decision is to follow Christ in all that we do, in all that we say, and in all that we hope for. <laughs> You're going to be baptized. Yeah. <laughs> Not him or you? Just, yeah. But he'll be there with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you ready? I hope so. You hope? <laughs> I, I think you missed the first part when I was talking about you've come to a, a time in your life of personal decision of accepting Christ as your Savior mm -hmm. and to follow Him. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is your outward commitment, your desire.
to follow him and show it before everyone to follow him for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. To not turn back. I ask you and I tell you, invite family, Ben. Invite friends, those that are at home listening to this. Invite your family and friends. Expect things to happen within your family. I'd like to add. Yes, Jeanette. When you were reading um, Acts 8, uh, 35, 36, uh, where Philip um, began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Yeah. And then the eunuch responded um, immediately and it's like, I want to get baptized. Yes. So uh, it, it brought up the scripture, uh, uh, what is it? The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Yeah. So as he, you know, as Philip was just speaking, he um, prophetically it already happened. You know, mm -hmm. he responded to the good news and and he believed, mm -hmm. and and then he went out and he he literally started multiplying. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. he did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it's really great. Um, it's such a good example to see what happens in our heart when we believe. You know, we can't help but share it, and that's the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. So these, you know, it just goes out like wildfire. Yeah, just so good to show us that the Holy Spirit had been at work yeah. prior to. I mean, because that was a really quick decision made on His heart, mm -hmm. uh, and it, I mean, which means to me that something was niggling back there already. Mm -hmm. So he was ready to accept, he was ready to hear, he was uh, just, you know, as the worship team, is, we're getting people ready to, yeah. to hear what yeah. God's yeah. word hear is. You know, this is an opportunity, this was a, a great opportunity. Philip was led there by the Holy Spirit and they matched up, you know, um, you know, by the, by the hand of the, the hand of God, basically, yeah. and yeah. then, you know, we have we saw in in Seon how far these places were apart and how, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, how are you going to find somebody in the middle of the road like that, oh, you know, next like to a bottle of water, you know? I mean, it's like... We so, didn't even talk about what happened to Philip afterwards. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. what we talk about yeah. our experience. <laughs> so, I, hope the, I hope whoever baptized you, we don't disappear. <laughs> That's where we'll end up. We won't know how to get home. <laughs> now, Maybe so, be home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. Now, something else interesting about the eunuch, uh, I read somewhere else, not, in, not in the scriptures, but that he was a Gentile. He was not Jewish, but he did have the beginning of understanding of the scripture, but he didn't know. He was reading the scriptures. The Holy Spirit was prodding him to read, mm -hmm. yeah. to understand that the Spirit was at work. And that's what we're having today. We're having the Spirit at work. The Spirit is working within our church. We have, that I know of, Five people on my list, and I, uh, from what I've heard, we have up to seven people out there, some of you, who are going to be a baptized. This is exciting. Yes. It's exciting for the church. It's exciting for us as believers. To see others come to Christ. To see others come to Christ. Amen. And again, that their baptism will be a testimony for others. Yes, I can remember being asked, well, why are you being baptized? What's it all about? I can't remember my explanations at the time other than I've made a decision to follow Jesus. Yeah. And this is my outward. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, one of the things you said, why were you being baptized? Um, when I got baptized again, yes. according, you know, because I was baptized in the Catholic Church. Yeah. And I can remember some of my friends saying, well, what, what did the first one take? You know? <laughs> what, I'm sorry. Said what? Didn't the first one take? Yeah. You know, and, and uh, so yeah, there, you know, there's there, for me it was it, uh, not that I would ever have dis or put down or, or made lit light of my childhood baptism, um, but for me it was more I had a, a deeper understanding, yeah. and and that's why I wanted to experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, total immersion, you know, and it, for, so that was for me, it was a, I had come to a deeper understanding. I mean, I was born and raised, you know, Catholic, kind of like being born and raised Jewish. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, 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 you're, you're immersed in the religion all the time. So, um, you know, for me, this was just a, as you said, an outward manifestation of my inward yeah. beliefs already. 
So, yes. because part of that belief in infant baptism, what they call christening, and they know obviously yes. the word Christ is in it, christening, <laughs> christening, yeah. is what happens to that baby if 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 we God forbid we don't baptize him, and he passes in the meantime. Before he, and I'm going to use the term, reaches the age of accountability. The Jewish people had a term or an age of accountability. And, and basically, you're not accountable for your sins until you understand and you reach that age of accountability. Mm -hmm. But they believe that the baby will be in limbo yeah, between. between heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. Does such a place exist? No. Earth. See? No. Earth. Earth. <laughs> Cindy, were you christened as a child? Yeah. Baptized. As a baby. Mm -hmm. Do you remember it? Or you were too young? No. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, it happened to me when I was when I was old enough to walk forward, but I just, you know, what was that experience? You know, I, and I enjoyed the Methodist Church. I enjoyed the things that were there. I enjoyed listening to the Bible stories. But not knowing what I had done or what was going on, I walked away from it. Now, when I received Christ as my personal Savior, I was alone. So again, I knew nothing about being baptized, but the first time that I heard about being baptized, I went forth to get baptized. We can have a couple minutes left as there's any other questions. How about going in baptism? Being immersed totally under the water. Does anybody have any concerns? No. Nope. When uh, when we were baptized, the preacher's wife she took pictures of us under immersion, and I'm yeah. sure they prayed for us. They did. You know, by looking at that. And, I mean, it was something different. Yeah. I thought that was a nice feature when we were baptized, because then you had. And then with your, uh, when our pastor gave us our certificate of mm -hmm. baptism, they they also gave you the picture of when you were baptized, mm -hmm. which I thought was is really nice. Mm -hmm. We have that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that might even be something we I might want to think about doing. Think we're going to be taking doing. pictures. Mm -hmm. Did you just give me a job, Larry? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I said, but... did he just give me a job? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, growing up in the you know Black Baptist Church in the yes, South, it was baptism was part of a process when you got to be about twelve or thirteen. Age of accountability. Yeah, consider. they wanted yeah. you to come up there on that mourner's bench, you know, during the revivals, and so those who came to believe in Christ, then they you know were expected to be baptized. So yes. we were taken out to the river and in August or so and. Not in the middle of winter? <laughs> no, it was it was in August, or so in the summer, and you were baptized, and then you could participate in communion because you yeah. were not going to be given communion before then. Right. I don't know if it's a real story, but I don't know, Jeremiah Johnson or somebody else, but I've read in the past about where somebody realized, you know, accepted the Lord needed to be saved, and went and chopped a hole in the ice in the water mm -hmm. and were baptized. Wow. Oh, that's Go a ahead. Bit much. <laughs> I was going to down at Stony Brook Park and we pretty much had to chop a hole in the ice. So. You did. There you go. Wow. There you go. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah. Yikes. Where Again, is baptism? Father, we thank you. Huh? Go ahead. Where is the baptism going to take place? Long point. Long point. Long point. Yeah. You going to be there? I don't know. Come on, you can throw us out. We'll throw you in, Carolyn. <laughs> I've been baptized in water. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. When I was 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, Father, we thank you 
We thank you specifically for those that are going to be baptized, that are making this outward commitment of something that's happened internally in their lives, and will share it with everyone. Lord, we ask that you bless Pastor Ben as he comes today and brings the word. We ask that you bless the worship team as we will be about to worship and praise you and praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. And we do this all in Jesus' name. And by the way, we'll be baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.